We finally have an inventory build, but the number of additional units compared to the same time as last year, well, decreased in a lot. What the f It seems like sellers are the only ones that can catch a break, but let's all break it down in this week's market report. Real quick, what to expect. As always, a check in with single family and the condo market and what's going on in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to talk interest rates because they are like the thorn in my shoe that I feel digging into my foot each and every step that I take. And it was a tough choice choosing which house to spotlight in this week's luxury segment, but we're headed to Manchester, Massachusetts, and I think you're gonna see why. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any real estate questions, then no, I'm here to help. Let's start with the single family market. The amount of inventory available to buyers, it's up. There are currently 2,857 units on the market. This is up 120 units from the same week last year. That's the good news. The bad news is that the amount of additional inventory that a buyer has to look at when compared to this time last year actually dipped 110 units to 725. It bears repeating the amount of additional inventory that a buyer has to choose from is 725 more units than the same time last year. Last year was when we hit a historical inventory low. We had 793 new listings come on the market this week and that's a big jump considering our four week rolling average has been 500 48 units, but still 23.6% behind last year when 1,038 single family homes came on the market. We had 673 homes go under agreement last week. Now the four week rolling average is 660 units, so we're right in line there. Compared to last year, however, this was a decrease of 182 units or 21.3%. So new listings were down 23.6% and pendings were down 21.3%. To say it another way, even with the hampered demand from interest rates, there are less sellers coming to the market than than buyers in the market currently going under contract. There were 590 homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $692,000 and a median sales price of $550,000. And months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in, zero to five months being a seller's market. And the closer you get to zero, well, the more aggressive of a seller's market it is. This week, months of inventory ticked up slightly to 1.31 months compared to last week's 1.23 months. This continues to indicate that it is a very strong market for sellers. Now, if you only had a nickel every time you heard me talk about the first seller's advantage, well, you'd have like a dollar, but I just can't stress it enough. Sellers who are contemplating selling this spring might want to consider coming to the market earlier like right now. The devil you know, which is at this point a pretty good devil if you're a seller, a lot of times is a lot better than the devil you don't know. Now on to the condo market. We had 1,797 condos on the market as of Monday. Now inventory broke the six week streak, finally moving up by 93 units. I guess the seventh week is the charm. The amount of additional inventory compared to the same week last year decreased though, and is now at 259 units compared to the same week last year. There were 439 newly listed condos that came on the market. Now, like the single family market, this was a pretty significant jump in inventory as the four week rolling average is 303 units. But this big number was still 21.2% below the same week last year when 557 condos came on the market. We had 327 condos go under agreement this week. The four week rolling average is 327. So we're consistent there. However, we were still 31 and a half percent off the number of units sold compared to the same week last year when 477 condos went under agreement. There were 321 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $607,000 and a median sales price of $485,000. And then months of inventory, it moved up to 1.96 months compared to last week's 1.85 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And subscribing, well, that doesn't hurt either. Now on to the bane of my existence. I mean, the mortgage market. We can file this week under, well, a crappy week for interest rates. They were up. And if you're a buyer today, then you're seeing interest rates in the high 6% range. And there's a good chance there might be a seven handle on that rate. Something that I have been hearing from a lot of home buyers is that they're just going to wait for rates to come down a little bit until they buy. If that's you, then do me a favor. Don't hold your breath. Look, we may see some interest rate dips to give a small pockets of affordability, but the overall trend for interest rates is that they are going to go up. Dare I say it, but it isn't a matter of if interest rates hit 8%, but when they hit 8% at this point. I know, I know, the housing market is going to collapse if interest rates go that high. 
I was at an open house this weekend. Nice house in Weymouth for an asking price of five fifty. In the first two hours of that open house, there were more to, more than forty five groups of people through it, and that was on Saturday when the weather was beautiful with snow, sleet, and rain. I went to another open house in Braintree, and there was a line out the door. Not because the agent was limiting so many people at a time, but because there was literally a traffic jam of people taking off their shoes and then putting back on. There were a ton of people, actually more people at that house than at the Weymouth house. Back to interest rates and them trending up. Let's just take the Fed chairman for his word in that he is prepared to increase the pace of rate hikes. The historical trend cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. And with that, the odds of a 50 basis point rate hike in March and May spiked a lot higher. Next week is a big week when it comes to economic data and news. On Tuesday, the consumer price index numbers come out and for February. Keep in mind that it was the CPI index numbers in February for the January data that set us on this huge mortgage rate increasing trend that we've seen pretty much since mid-February. If this number comes in higher than what we are estimating, then get ready to see an even bigger surge in interest rate. Real quick, check out this article from CNBC. Homes might be more affordable in 2024, but that doesn't mean you should wait to buy one. Well, that one caught my eye. A couple of pull quotes that you might find interesting as, well, I know I did. While it might be tempting to hold off on buying a property until a better deal arrives, there's no guarantee that mortgage rates will drop or that homes will become more affordable in 2024, say real estate analyst Andy Economics interviewed by CNBC. There really is no guarantee that rates are going to go down, but let's do some quick math in a moment. But first, the article also notes, despite forecasts of lower mortgage rates, in 2024, don't expect them to bottom out to the record lows of the past decade either, says Lawrence Yon, chief economics of the National Association of Realtors. And I couldn't agree with him more here. If you're waiting for interest rates to come down to three or 4% to buy your house, then you're gonna be more likely to actually find Jack and buy his magic bean stocks. So onto that quick math, the average sales price in February 2022 was $631,000. Now the interest rate at the end of February for a 30 year fixed rate loan was 3.89%. Assuming 10% down, that would mean the average monthly principal and interest payment was $2,675. In February 2023, the average sales price was $655,967 with a 30-year fixed rate at 6.85%. At the end of the month, assuming a 10% down, uh, that would mean the average monthly payment was $3,869. Now, let's just imagine that February 2024 brings us an average sales price the same as this year, but with an interest rate of 6.5% because it went down. That would mean your payment is $3,732. Not a huge savings when you factor in a year of throwing money away, paying your landlord rent. Not a savings at all when you factor in the tax benefits of owning a home and being able to write off the interest that you pay on the loan as well as your property taxes. Now let's jump to the luxury home of the week. Welcome home to 38 Mesconimo Street in Manchester. Now this home is waterfront and spans 10,000 square feet with seven bedrooms and nine full and one half bath. Last week's home that was for sale for $30 million had five fireplaces. So don't be too disappointed with the three fireplaces that this home has. Nestled on 4.22 acres, it is a manor that offers a perfect blend of classic and contemporary style. The entryway is amazing as it welcomes you to a palatial foyer with soaring ceilings and a grand double staircase. The chef's kitchen has custom Elmwood cabinets, a sub-zero refrigerator and freezer, two thermidor dishwashers, and a six burner wolf range and oven. The second level offers seven bedrooms, which all have ensuite bathrooms, as well as stunning ocean views. You're also going to find a leisure and entertainment complex with a movie theater, billiards room, and a sizable home gym, which I found pretty interesting as most times these spaces are actually tucked away in the basements and not on the second floors. So that was nice. Nice. But outside, this is where you're going to find the saltwater infinity pool and spa, an outdoor kitchen and gazebo, which makes this the perfect house for summer entertaining. The fully outfitted cabana also has a full kitchen, bathroom, steam shower, and sauna, plus a gas fireplace. And last, but definitely not least, is the private beach with deeded beach rights. Now, the house is being marketed with an asking price of $14,995,000. Want to talk about all of your personal real estate needs at all? 
all of my contact information, it's in the description below. You also can visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com, fill out a couple questions, then I'm going to reach out to you, whichever way is easiest and works best for you. I love talking about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any of the market data that we talked about today, then drop me a line in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to your questions. And as I always say, an informed person, well, they're a powerful person. So until next time.